Hi, I'm Jen from Tea Leaves in Tween, and welcome to another Sunrise Tea Session. Today, it's cherry blossom season in Washington, D.C. Our cherry blossoms are so close to coming out downtown. I actually took a visit this past week to take a look at how they're doing, and some of them have popped out, but we're still waiting on our peak bloom. But in honor of the imminent peak bloom, I decided to present a tea session that is matcha green tea from Japan. And because I have the joy and privilege of living in a town with a traditional Japanese wagashi maker, I've decided to share some of their handmade Japanese sweets as well. Now, unfortunately, they were out of the handmade fresh sakura mochi, which is their sweet specifically for cherry blossom season. But of course that wouldn't work for a sunrise tea session because I would have to keep it overnight and they're really best eaten the very same day that they're made. But I've got some of their other more shelf stable treats to share with you today. So here we've got our Japanese sweets. These two are a type of sweet called Ge Doroko. These are a wheat based Japanese sweet. This one is a soft biscuit that's filled with a paste made from white bean and sweetened condensed milk and a little bit of almond flavoring. And this one, which is actually my favorite of the two, is a hard wheat cracker with red azuki beans inside, a sweet red azuki bean paste inside. And I really love red bean paste. So this is a bar of red bean jelly called yokan. Uh, it's just a sweet brick of red bean jelly and it's very very tasty and very traditional. They also make this with matcha green tea flavor, uh, chestnut flavor, and they also do a caramel and a chocolate flavor that they said they only sell in the United States. And of course when you go to this wagashi maker they give you what they call service which is a little freebie and this time I got this little candy. It's called Rakugan, which is a type of Japanese sugar art. And if you unwrap it here, out of this beautiful pink wrapping, probably for cherry blossom season, you can see this lovely little molded flower made out of fine sugar. It just tastes like sugar, but it's very, very pretty. And then of course they always give you an origami crane which is so sweet. So I think I'm going to have this biscuit today. It's not my favorite, but they're all so delicious. And I think the white bean goes a little bit more with the white flowers of cherry blossom season. like a little cookie but inside there's white bean paste. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about matcha green tea. So matcha is a kind of powdered tea from Japan. It's a specific type of tea called tencha. The very renowned famous districts for the growing of tencha for matcha are Uji Prefecture and Shizuoka Prefecture. However, this organic Kaoru Supreme Organic Matcha is from Kagoshima Prefecture, which is very well known for having a lot of green tea production, for being economical, and for having the most extensive organic uh, operation. So organic isn't really necessary with matcha, but Kagoshima Matcha is also pretty economical. So this was actually the first matcha that I ever bought from, directly from Japan. This comes from a company called Ocha.com, and I'll link it down below. So, when you make matcha, you don't steep it like a normal tea because it's already powdered. You make it in a very large bowl. This is actually a handmade bowl from a local craftsman in Maryland named Mary Lee Schumann. I got this yesterday because I thought the white color would really offset the beautiful color of the matcha. And it has a very large base so that you can whisk the matcha. Because the nice thing about matcha is that you whisk it and it gets this beautiful froth. So why don't I show you how that's done? So first, I'm gonna take a little water from my teapot 
and warm my matcha bowl. And I'm also going to moisten my matcha whisk, which is a bamboo whisk. So I'll just swirl that around in the water to moisten it and to kind of work the water around to warm the bowl. And then put back on my little stand. And we'll get rid of this. And then, traditionally, you would sift your whole batch of matcha into a beautiful container. These canisters that the matcha is stored in are handmade and really lovely. But since I tend to make matcha one bowl at a time just for myself, I'm going to just sift directly into my bowl. So I'll take a little bit of my matcha. I'm gonna use a traditional bamboo scoop I'm gonna fluff it up a little bit with the bamboo scoop and then take it from the side of the container. And I'm going to use two scoops, which is about two grams. And then use my little cloth to wipe the matcha off my scoop. And normally I would wipe my bowl out after I warmed it, but I actually already cleaned this bowl inside today. Seal that up so that the matcha stays fresh. And then use the little bamboo scoop to push the matcha through the sifter. And then give it a little tap to get all the little bits out. another wipe. I probably wiped it a little too soon. And then you want to add about two ounces of water. It's a very small amount of water. I do this by eye because I have an idea of how much water that means in this bowl. I like to kind of clean the sides off a little bit and you just go for it and whisk it. It's a back and forth motion towards you and away from you. It's, it's all in the wrist as they say and ideally you're trying to get very fine bubbles. You're not touching the bottom of the bowl which is actually very hard with this little amount of water in this big bowl of matcha. You're just trying to break the surface of the matcha to whisk it up into a nice froth. And it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to really get it worked up into a nice froth. And you can see, not bad. I have a couple bigger bubbles, but it's mostly a very fine froth. So now I'm going to enjoy my bowl of matcha and my wagashi. Traditionally, you're supposed to take a bite of the wagashi as the host is preparing your matcha so that you have the sweetness of the wagashi just still barely on your tongue as you taste the tea. nice treat first thing in the morning. Mm. It's very soft. You can taste the almond flavoring. It's so creamy tasting from the condensed milk. And then the white beans just give it that slightly more substantial uh, quality to it. I really love all of these wagashi. And now I'll have, now I'll have a little sip of my matcha. This is a very smooth matcha. You don't get that really intense hit of bitterness that you get with lower quality matcha. It's, uh, you get a little bit of a bitter tea flavor, but it's almost, 
It's almost a sweet bitter, if that makes sense. It goes very well with the wagashi, although it's really not necessary to eat anything with this because it's so delicious. It tastes like uh, fresh vegetables, like fresh green vegetables, a little bit like spinach, but it's fresh uh, raw spinach, maybe baby spinach even. It's not a very heavy spinachy taste. And it almost smells like, like red kale. So I find that red kale smells a little bit more perfumey than regular green kale. So it's, it's a slightly more pleasant smell to it. It's got that little bit of umami characteristic, which is that almost richness that you get from certain foods. Uh, Kind of strange to think of in something like a cup of tea maybe because it's often associated with things like meats and soy sauce but it's not a salty flavor it's just a quality in your mouth mm. that is a lovely way to start my morning i find that when i drink matcha it's very caffeinated because you put the whole tea leaf in and it's it's kind of like People call it the espresso of green tea, and it is a little bit like espresso, very concentrated, and even has the little froth, like the crema you would get on a good espresso shot. But matcha gives me a much more uplifted, happy feeling. So I'm awake and I'm energetic from the caffeine, but I also just feel very happy and calm. So I hope you enjoyed this tea session, and hopefully you'll join me for another one soon. Happy cherry blossom season.